Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to discuss the residual activity of certain herbicides. Well, when we talk about weed control, whether it's in fields or gardens or yards, one of the factors that we'll look at is, does the herbicide that we're using have soil residual? What that means is, instead of just killing the weeds as it's sprayed on top of them, is there some root uptake or shoot uptake so as that seed starts to germinate in the ground, it pulls in out of the soil this herbicide and it controls it that way. With many farmers across the country, the best application they make throughout the whole season is that soil residual herbicide so they can kill weeds before they come up and start competing with their crop. But how much residual is there with some of these herbicides? Well, the first thing that we always look at is what's the half-life of a herbicide? And that means how long until half of it is gone. So if the half-life is 30 days, that means that, hey, we put out the full rate today, 30 days later we can expect half of it is left. 30 days after that we can expect half of the half is left and so on. And once we get down to a certain level, either it's completely gone or it's certainly tolerable by the next crop. When we look at that, now we're not talking about killing residual, so let's just say you're putting a herbicide out to try and kill pigweeds, for example. Maybe for the first 30 days there's enough dose out there to kill pigweeds. After that it might not do the job. So the half-life isn't necessarily a measure of, well, how long is it actually going to control weeds, but how long it is going to persist in the soil. Well, a lot of that, though, depends on which weed we're talking about because while it may not be very active on pigweeds, it may be super active on green foxtail, for example. And then the other factors we've got to look at are when we say half-life, okay, half-life under what conditions? So in other words, if the ground's completely froze, well, we're not ticking any days off that half-life clock. Usually these herbicides are broken down by bacteria and then they're used up by plants. Okay, so no plants are growing when it's below freezing and no bacteria are moving and doing anything with it when it's below freezing. So those are very important factors. In addition to that, we take a look at things like soil pH, plant nutrient levels, which crop is planted, how much of the crop is planted. In other words, how many weeds are there and how many plants are there that can absorb that particular herbicide. All these factors just make a huge difference. And then there's something else too with the bacteria. There are certain herbicides like the old eradicane that we used 30 years ago. If you use that in the soil one time, the bacteria would start to build up the kind that broke down the eradicane. So it would tell you right on the label, hey, don't use it in back-to-back -back years because there will be so, much, so many of those bacteria around. And what we always used to say is don't use it any more than once out of five years because there will be enough bacteria that literally they could break it all down in one week if you get enough of them. Alright, let's say that you pick one of these soil residual herbicides and you apply it out to your soil and then you get no rain. If it's exceptionally dry, these soil residual herbicides need some moisture not only to get down into the soil if you're not doing incorporation, and then also they need some moisture in the soil to be able to be sucked into those root systems of the growing weeds. If you don't have sufficient amount of water, sometimes that herbicide doesn't get into those plants before they start germinating and start growing. So people will ask, well, wait a second, I put a residual herbicide on, but it doesn't appear to be working in my field. Then all of a sudden you get a big rain. It can stop the next flush of weeds that are germinating. However, most soil residual herbicides don't have what's termed as a reach back activity to get the weeds that are already up and tall. So if you're not getting moisture, soil residual herbicides are going to work a little differently. They're going to wait until there is sufficient moisture to actually start killing weeds. As farmers, we love having some soil residual, so we have decent control not just on the day we spray, but for a few weeks after that. Once we get a few weeks into the growing season, our crop is up, it's big enough, and it shades out the weeds from coming later on. So most of these herbicides only last for a few weeks, no big deal. Every once in a while though, we've got a really long residual herbicide, and then we do have to be concerned about which crops we're going to rotate to. Well, I think one of the big things there too, Brian, is just why do we need this? Well, what we need is we need that time window from when we apply that herbicide and the crop is just starting to grow until when it can shade out the ground and control weeds the way nature has intended is just with shade. So that's what we're trying to get to when we're using these soil residual herbicides. What it's done for agriculture and really for the environment is it's reduced the amount of tillage that farmers have had to do. Normally farmers would go out in between the rows of crop and do tillage 
constantly. I mean, every week they'd be out doing tillage, trying to stop weeds. Now with residual herbicides, we've eliminated a lot of that tillage, which has greatly reduced the amount of soil erosion going out there. And of course, the amount of fuel that's being burned and, and all these things that can be negative environmental factors. Soil residual herbicides have changed all that and made it so much better for all of us that yes, like you said, Brian, we're just looking for this short window of time to get some help from those soil residual herbicides so we can do farming the right way and much more environmentally friendly. So as farmers, one of the things we're always looking for with a herbicide is how much residual does it have? And we wanna make sure that we can use it in the crop rotation that we've got. Well, one of the other things that we're looking for in our crop rotation is how we're gonna control our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.